Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar today. Um, I'm Jack Parry and I'm a consultant at the Information Lab here in London. Um, today we're going to be discussing how you can build a cloud data lake from your SaaS platforms using AWS. So just to outline the agenda for today's session, um, firstly we're going to briefly explore what SaaS platforms are then we're going to move on to why would we want to move our data out of these platforms and into AWS. Um, and then just as this brief intro session, um, we're going to outline the architecture that we're going to build later on in the session in AWS. So just a, a brief overview of the different um, AWS services that we're going to use. And then finally, we'll move on to that hands-on um, demo of building out these services. So our first point, what are SaaS platforms? Um, if you're here for this session, then you may already be aware of what they are. Um, but for those that aren't, it stands for software as a service. Um, and you will have most likely come into, the, come into touch with these platforms already. Um, you just may not know that that's what they are. Um, so what is software as a service? It's a software distribution model. Um, by which a cloud provider will host applications and make them available to their end users via the internet. Um, so you'll see this um, out there more and more. So instead of downloading a software package and utilizing it on your desktop, um, you'll more, more typically now log into a browser experience um, and access your applications that way. So as you can see down the bottom there, Salesforce, Google Analytics, Marketo, NetSuite, these are all examples of SaaS platforms which provide a whole range of use cases. Um, and the number of these platforms is growing all the time. And more critically, the uptake of these platforms is, is also on the rise. Um, and as a result of this increase in uptake, it's becoming more and more important to be able to use the data that we have stored in these platforms in our analytics that drive business decisions. Um, so that quite nicely brings us on to why would we move our data into AWS? Um, you have all of these different services that you've got set up and you can access them. So you can log into your Salesforce platform and view all your data there. And you can log into your Google Analytics and see your web analytics. Um, but why why would we want to bring our data into AWS? So, as we've highlighted just now, it's it's really important to be able to use this data in our analytics that drive business decisions. Um, but with this data being stored all over the place and there being an increasingly large number of these platforms available, our data is going to become more and more spread out, and it can become increasingly difficult to tie all of these data sources together. Um, you can often write custom integrations to pull this data together in whichever way you may seem fit, but these integrations can be costly, they can be a bit time consuming, and they do bring about the potential for human error. Um, and that's where we can use AWS um, in this process, because one of the tools that we're going to be using, um, their service Amazon AppFlow, makes it really, really easy to um, pull information or pull your data from these SaaS platforms into AWS. Um, so there's a few ideas down the bottom here. So you might want to store all of your data in one place um, for ease of access. So you could start to you could start to store your data in maybe an RDS database or Redshift cluster um, for all of your end users to access in one place. So they would only have to log into one database to retrieve any data they may want from Salesforce, Google Analytics, um, Marketo, and a number of SaaS platforms that you may be using, um, giving them less credentials to remember and less logins to sign into. Or you may want to start building some custom applications based off your, um, based off your Salesforce data or your Google Analytics data. Um, in which case you could build these custom applications in AWS and then 
it makes sense to have all of that data already stored in S3 and you can access your data lake and tie it in seamlessly with any downstream applications you may be uh, using. So you might want to use your Salesforce data to trigger off some Lambda functions, which then has um, a knock-on effect on other areas. Um, just to explain what we're going to do in this session, um, we're just going to be looking at Salesforce data. So we're going to be pulling in data from a Salesforce org into an S3 bucket um, using Amazon AppFlow. And then um, we're going to be at the end querying that data in Tableau. And I just want to make clear that the purpose of this session is showing how you can get your data out of these platforms and into S3 and start to build that data lake in S3. This is not um, trying to show an alternative to the Tableau Salesforce connector. If you just want to connect to your Salesforce data in Tableau, then you should be using the Salesforce connector. You do not need to go through this lengthy process of putting your data into S3 and then querying it that way. Um, you should be using the Salesforce connector, but I just want to make clear that this is more a session to outline why you might or how you can start pulling your um, data from these SaaS platforms into Amazon S3 and then querying them as opposed to replacing any other types of connectors that Tableau may have. So just to outline the architecture that we're going to start to build out in um, AWS, you can see over on the left hand side um, that we've got Salesforce there as a data source, Google Analytics and Slack. Um, there are actually a whole number of sources that you can use for Amazon AppFlow, but there's just a few there to um, show off as an example. Um, we'll, we'll have a look at some of the documentation later to just show the number of integrations that they've got in there. So we're then going to configure some flows using Amazon AppFlow here. Um, this will pull the data in from Salesforce in this example um, and then it will load it into an S3 bucket that we've created um, which is that next step here. So once it's pulled through Amazon AppFlow and into S3 we're then going to use AWS Glue. Um, we're going to set up a glue crawler which is going to crawl our S3 buckets and create a metadata schema in the Glue data catalog. Um, and once we've got that set up, we can start to query the data using Amazon Athena. Um, so I will show you how you can set up an IAM role to use with Athena and then start to query that data that you've got hosted in S3 um, through Tableau. So we'll start to dive into the AWS console now and have a look at how we can build this out. So here we are in the AWS management console ready to start configuring our architecture for this data lake. Um, and the first thing that we need to do here is to create an S3 bucket. Um, so this is Amazon's object-based storage service um, and that's where we're going to host all of our data coming in from our SaaS platforms, um, well, Salesforce in this example. That's where we're going to host all of our data um, in Amazon Web Services. So you can also use Redshift um, as a data store here, but obviously Redshift is a massive data warehousing um, service. And for this task here, um, I think that's a bit much. So we're just going to store our data in S3. Um, so here we go. We'll head over to S3 and um, we'll just create a bucket that we can load our Salesforce data into. Um, so you can hear, see here we've got a whole number of different buckets. Um, we'll create a new one for this demo. Um, and we'll just call this something simple like AppFlow Webinar. Um, and you'll see here that AWS highlight to you that your bucket name must be unique. Um, you deploy your bucket into a region, but the S3 namespace is global. So if anyone else anywhere in the world has um, a bucket that's called AppFlow Webinar, 
S3 won't let me create this bucket name. So, for example, if you try to set up a bucket name called test, you'll probably get an error saying that, well, you will get an error saying that this someone else already has this bucket name. Um, so we just leave our, we're going to leave our region as London because um, that's where I am. Um, we're going to, we don't need to copy any settings from an existing bucket. Um, we can leave all our access. We don't need public access for this. Um, and then we're gonna leave our bucket versioning as it is. We're gonna leave everything as default and we're gonna create our bucket. So we've now got that created here um, with our app flow webinar. Um, and now we're gonna dive into creating our app flows, which are gonna pull in our um, opportunities object from Salesforce and our accounts object from Salesforce. So we're going to head over to AppFlow now and start setting some of those up. So some of you may not have heard of AppFlow before. Um, so what is AppFlow? It's um, a fully managed integration service uh, by AWS that enables you to securely transfer your data between your SaaS platforms and your, um, your AWS services such as S3. So we can see here it gives an outline of um, how how it works. Um, we connect to our numerous different sources. Um, so there you can see Salesforce is the top one up there. You've also got Slack, Marketo, there's a lot more. And then you can use AppFlow to transfer that data. Um, you can filter data out, you can validate it, you can add some formulas if you want. And then you push that data to a destination. So you can see um, over on the right hand side we've got Redshift as I mentioned earlier, S3 that we're going to be using in this example, we've got Snowflake and we've also got Salesforce there. So um, you could actually use AppFlow to um, load some uh, data from S3 back into your Salesforce org if you wanted to. Um, or you could combine some data from two different Salesforce orgs and load it back into one using AppFlow. Um, there's a whole number of different things that you could do with it. Um, and then here we can see get started with your favorite application. So we're using Salesforce today, but there's a whole number of um, applications that you can use. If we go to more applications, there are 21. Um, and this list is constantly growing. AWS are always adding um, new services that you can connect to. So if what you're looking for isn't there at the moment, then it may well be in time. Um, just before we dive in and start building out our flow, um, we're just going to look at this documentation here um, that AWS provide on AppFlow and in particular using Salesforce. So we'll put this um, we'll put this URL in the in the description of the video, um, so you can access it, but you can see here we're in the documentation for AppFlow, we're actually in the user guide and there are some requirements for the supported applications that you need to make sure are set up before you start to use the service. Um, so when I first started playing around with this, I sometimes ran into issues where perhaps I couldn't connect to Salesforce and I had to stumble ac across um, this user guide to just point out some requirements that need to be there. Um, need to be in place before you can use this service seamlessly. Um, so for for our Salesforce org, you need to have your account enabled for API access. Um, you need to be able to install connected apps on Salesforce. Um, normally this all works fine, um, especially if you've just got a developer org. Um, normally all this can configure okay, but um, if you've got an enterprise org, some of these things may be blocked by your Salesforce administrator, so it's always good to check those out. Um, some other things like this third point, your refresh token policy for the Amazon AppFlow embedded login app must be set to refresh token until valid. It refresh token is valid until revoked. Um, and there's a few others down there, but I won't go through them all, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, if you start running into any issues when you're trying to connect to Salesforce using AppFlow. So 
So here we are in the Amazon app flow landing page. Um, and what we're going to do from here is we're going to start to create our flow. So we want to go in here and just select create flow and it will take us to, we just ignore this error on the top here. Um, it will take us to the page where we can start to configure our first flow. So it's worth noting at this point that you're going to have to set up a flow for each Salesforce object that you want to pull or whichever uh, data source you use. Um, so in this case, we're going to be looking at the opportunities object and the accounts object. Um, so we're going to have to set up two flows, but once we've done one, it's pretty straightforward to go through and do the other one. Um, so we've got our five steps here that we're going to go through. In our first step, we just want to um, enter a flow name. So I'm going to call this Salesforce Ops. Um, and then you can add in a description for your flow if you'd like to. Um, it's not required, but if you want to just give yourself a description to remind yourself what your flow is, then go for it. Um, you've then got this option on data encryption. Um, so AppFlow is going to encrypt your access tokens, secret keys, and data in transit and at rest. Um, by default, they're going to use the AWS managed key in your account. Um, but you can go through and change that if you'd like to customize the encryption settings. So if we select this tick box, then you get an option to choose a different KMS key. Um, I'm just going to leave this as default for now, but if you wanted to do some custom encryption, then you could. And then you get these options uh, for tags as well. I'm going to leave them blank. I'm going to go through and hit next. And this is where we set up our source and our destination. So from our source, we want to select Salesforce. You can see from this list all the different uh, sources that you can connect to. And then I get this option to connect. If um, you've already connected to Salesforce using AppFlow, then you'd have a, um, a little option here to select previous connections. But I deleted my connection out before recording this video so we could um, set one up from scratch. So we're going to go through and hit connect. And now the first option you get here is to select your Salesforce environment. So you will either be connecting to a production or sandbox environment that is dependent on your use case. I'm going to be connecting to a production org here. So um, I'm going to leave that as it is. And then um, here we can see the data encryption is being provided by the AWS managed key. If I change the, uh, the encryption earlier on, then this will be updated. Then we're going to specify a name for our connection. I'm going to call this Salesforce. And then we're going to go and continue. And it should pop out another window. Um, so I get this page um, pop up saying Amazon AppFlow Embedded Login App is asking to do this, um, asking for these permissions. You should get a login screen. Um, so you'll get your username and password. Once you enter those correctly, you should get this screen. The reason I got this immediately is because I'm already signed into my Salesforce org in this browser. Um, but so we want to allow that. And that, this is basically, um, we saw on the requirements earlier, there was a, a point on allowing connected app called embed, uh, Amazon app flow embedded login. That's what this is um, now configuring for us. So we want to allow this. And then we should just get taken back to Amazon app flow. So we've got our Salesforce connection here and now we can pull our Salesforce objects or Salesforce events. So with app flow, you can, there are three configurations on how you can set up a flow to run. So you can either have a flow run on demand or scheduled. And that's for specific Salesforce objects. So if I now go into here, I get all of my objects from my org. So I'm going to look for my opportunities object. So here we go, opportunity. Um, and I'm going to pull that through. But if I wanted to pull through a specific event, um, so say like, here we go, an account has been changed. Um, these this this will work off um, an event based trigger flow. So I'll show you in a second. Um, but so every time there was an update in um, my Salesforce account, 
or a, a line in the account object, um, that information would be pushed through to AWS and then you could use that information to maybe trigger some downstream processes. Um, but we're going to go with our opportunities for now. So if I just set this back, opportunity, and then we want to set up a destination. So we've got uh, five destinations here. As I said earlier, you can write back to Salesforce if you'd like. You can write to Snowflake. We're going to write to S3 in this instance. Um, and then we're going to have our bucket. So it's this one we created earlier, AppFlow webinar. And there we have it. So this is the S3 URL that we're going to be writing to. Um, you can enter a prefix for the data that's going to be written to the bucket if you'd like. Um, you can also specify the format in which um, your data is loaded in in these additional settings. So you could specify JSON, CSV, or Parquet. Um, you can specify whether your data is going to be aggregated or not. You can add a timestamp to the file, or you can also um, set up your folder structure. So your your um, each run of the flow will place your file in a timestamped folder. I'm going to leave all of these as default. And um, so now we see our flow triggers, which I mentioned just a minute ago. So we can set this up to run on demand, or we could set it up to run on a schedule. Um, so on demand is pretty self-explanatory. Just whenever I hit run, it will run. Or I could run it on a schedule, and I can set it up to run every sort of minute or up to monthly, weekly, one time, whatever. And then with a on a schedule, um, you can configure whether you do an incremental transfer or a full transfer of your data. So every if you're running your flow every um, hour or so then you can do an incremental transfer and so you're not always doing full transfer of your data every time using up valuable space in s3 if i do run on demand um the reason i can't uh set up that incremental transfer is because it will just do a full run of the data every time you'll see that this run flow on event is grayed out um that's because i've selected an object if I select an event and change this to account change event, we'll see here this will run on the event. So when this Salesforce event occurs, which is a change in the account object, this flow will run. We change this back to opportunity. There we go. We're going to leave it as on demand and hit next. So then this is where we have to map our fields. So you can upload a CSV file uh, with your maps fields, but we're just going to manually map them using the um, management console. And so if we go here, we're going to choose our source, fi source fields, and we're actually going to use this bulk action here to map all of our fields directly. So if we just select that, we get um, all of our fields come through. And then we want to select all 43 mappings. So we've selected all of our fields. So then you just see what the source name, the source field name is called and what it's going to be uh, mapped to. You can add some formulas, you can modify the data if you'd like. Um, and you can do some validations as well. So what 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 would happen if say look if my opportunity ID is is missing, what action should it take? So you could either ignore the flow or you could just ignore that record. I'm going to leave those. I'm going to not set up any validations. Um, we're just going to go over the default settings, but it's pretty handy that you can add that in if you'd like to. We go to next. Again, we can add some filters here. So a bit different to validations, but so I could say um, my, I don't know, my amount has to be over a certain amount. And that's going to filter the data accordingly. Um, but again, I'm going to leave those as blank. I'm going to hit next. And then here we go. I mean, there's not much to look at in here now because I haven't really changed any of the default settings. But this is just where we review everything. So we've got our Salesforce ops. Our AWS managed key is doing the encryption. We can go through. Um, we've got our opportunity ID, account ID. All of those fields, 
our validations, and now we're just going to hit create flow. Um, there we go. Our flow has been set up, successfully created. Um, and I'm just going to hit run. It started running my flow. Um, Hopefully that shouldn't take too long. And there we go. So we can see the start time, the duration, how many records were processed. Um, and we also get a link to go and view our, our data uh, in our bucket. So if I now go out to that link, we've got an object. So we can see we're in our AppFlow webinar. AppFlow neatly can, uh, creates a folder for your different flows. So when we go through and create um, the accounts object flow, we'll get another one called Salesforce accounts or depending on what you call your flow. And then in here, this is our data. Um, so um, will I be able to open this up? So this, I haven't made the, the data set, pub, uh, the, sorry, the, the object publicly accessible. That's why we're not getting um, any, we're getting an error message here. Um, but if I go back to S3, um, object actions, if we go and make public, make public, make a little failure there. Um, okay. Might have to make the bucket itself public. So if we edit our public access settings, we turn that off. Save changes, confirm. So if I now go to my object, Object actions, if I now make it public, there we go, successfully edited public access. And now uh, if I go exit that and go to the object URL, oh, okay, um, obviously we've encrypted our data, um, so we're not going to be able to view it in browser. So if we just go back and download it, here we have it. So it might not make that much sense at this point, um, but we can see we've got JSON information here. Uh, so we've got our ID is deleted, account ID, um, and we can see that data coming through. So that's what we want at this point. Um, we've got our app flow set up, we've got our opportunities coming through. I'm going to go off and create the accounts app flow um, and load that data into S3. And then when we come back, um, we'll look at how we can set up our glue crawler to crawl our S3 bucket. And then we can start to query that data in Amazon Athena and Tableau. So I've now got my second flow set up, my Salesforce accounts flow. Um, I don't think it was worth going through that in the video just because it's exactly the same as the opportunities one. Um, just wanted to save a bit of time, but we've got that set up here. Um, we can see that it's active. I'm just going to give that a run. Um, and that should then pull some data into my same bucket. So my AppFlow webinar bucket. Um, let that do its thing. There we go. So we've got a thousand records that have gone into our bucket. If we just go and check, um, we're going to go into S3 and in our app flow webinar bucket, we should, there we go. So now we've got our ops and our accounts as our two folders. We can go through and in our accounts, we'll have um, our flow that was just run. And obviously in our ops, we've got our flow that we our data from our flow that we ran earlier. Um, so whilst we're here in S3, um, so I don't have to come back to it, 
we're also just going to set up a third folder. Um, so this is going to be where when you query data using Athena um, in S3, Athena writes queries, right? And so like whenever you're um, querying data in Tableau, whenever you drag and drop things, that's running a query to Athena and um, Amazon store all of this information. So all the different queries, all the different accesses through Athena and it has to store them um, in AWS, uh, sorry, in S3 somewhere. Um, and I want to just create a folder for that um, because you'll see that when we um, set up Tableau, it will ask for a staging directory and that's where we're um, writing all our Athena queries to. So if I just call this table name Athena, um, should be fine. We don't need to enable encryption for the purpose of this demo. Now we've got that third folder called Athena. And in this next step now, when we go to set up our glue crawler, um, we will tell our crawler to explicitly ignore that Athena folder when it's looking for data to um, create our metadata catalog. Um, so you'll see that as we go to configure glue now. So that's the next step. Um, we're gonna head over to glue. Um, so we just head into glue. So um, there's a lot you can do with AWS glue. Um, it's a serverless integration service, um, which makes it easy to discover, prepare and combine data for analytics or machine learning or other application deployment. Um, we're going to specifically look at glue crawlers here to catalog the metadata of our tables so we can query it using Athena. Um, but there are other elements of glue. So you've got glue data, uh, you've got glue studio down here, which is where you can create ETL workloads, or there's also another new service called glue data brew, um, which is where you can clean and normalize data without writing code. So it's almost a similar experience to um, Tableau prep in a way. Um, but yeah, that's a new one, but we're going to focus on crawlers here. So what these crawlers do, they run through a data store. Um, in our case, our S3 bucket, where we're starting to build out our data lake. Um, so in your, in your use case, you might start to populate that data lake with Google Analytics data, data from Marketo, Slack data. Obviously in this uh, just shorter session, we're just looking at Salesforce data, but the whole bigger idea here is that you start to build a data lake. Um, so what we want to do is we want to create these automatic crawlers that are going to go through our bucket and create metadata schemas for our tables, um, which we can then go on to use Athena to query. So if we head over to our crawlers, you can see there's a few here. Um, we're going to set one up from scratch, but what you'll see here is they run and then they'll create or update tables. Um, and that's what we want to do here. We want to define two tables for our accounts and our um, opportunities objects. So I'm going to add a crawler and we're going to call this, um, we're just going to call it AWS webinar. Um, again, you can add some tags, descriptions, we don't need to do any of that. Um, and these classifiers again, you can um, build your own cluster, custom classifiers if you want to, um, if you've got a slightly different data structure, but um, with these JSON files that we've got stored in S3, um, the crawler will pick them up. It's gonna hit next. And so our crawler type is gonna be, we're gonna crawl some data stores, um, which is gonna be our S3 bucket. And here we can do, uh, do we want it to crawl all folders or only new folders that have been added since the last crawl? Um, so you, you, you might want to be setting up to crawl only the new folders going forward, but in this case, we're just going to leave things as default and go with crawl all folders. So moving on, S3 is our data store in this case, um, but you have a range of options so you could look um you could uh, look in dynamo db 
or MongoDB or other JDBC connections. So um, you can actually use Glue to catalog data that you've got stored in a database somewhere as well, um, if you if you was looking to do that. But as we've said, we're using S3 as our data store here. So we can leave that as S3. Um, we don't need to include a network connection with it with this S3 target. Uh, it's not like our S3 bucket is within a VPC or anything. We don't need to um, connect to any VPC endpoints uh, to access our data, so we can leave our connection blank. Um, and then here, we're looking for a specified uh, path within my account. So you can actually set the crawler up to crawl in other accounts if you so wished. Um, so then what we want to do is set our include path. So this is where the crawler is going to go and look for data. So what we're going to do there, if we're going to pop open our file browse, and we want to look in our AppFlow webinar. So you could actually go into the lower levels of this, into the different folders, but we actually want it to look across the whole AppFlow webinar um, bucket. And then what we can do with the option below with these exclude patterns is we can exclude our Athena queries bucket that we created earlier, because once we start querying the data, um, there will be files in there and we don't want our glue crawler to be picking those up and trying to catalog them. Um, it's also worth noting as well, whereas we had to create um, the separate flows for our different objects with our crawler, we only need one crawler to go through the AppFlow webinar uh, folder, or sorry, the AppFlow webinar bucket. So in our glob pattern here that we're gonna exclude, um, they kind of explain it to you down here. So for example, with include path, my bucket and exclude pattern, my directory forward slash star star, then everything within here will be included except the my directory, anything within there will, or my DR, DIR will be excluded. So here we just want to write Athena forward slash star star. So we're going to look in our other two folders, but not Athena, or if we had more, folders so if we pulled in other objects or maybe again our google analytics data um we'd be pulling in those folders as well and hit next do we want to add another data store no and um you need an iam role for you will you need to create an iam role for this so um glue will do that for you but you basically, or you could create one yourself as well, but these are the permissions you need to have. So you need to um, you need to make sure you set it up in the right way. And this is so that Glue, um, with this IAM role, can go in and see the data in our S3 bucket because it would be locked down otherwise. Um, so I'm just gonna call this um, SAS webinar. Um, so that's just the name of the IAM role. Um, AWS will just go and create this for me and attach it to the crawler. Um, and then we'll be able to read access to this bucket. Go next. We're gonna have this run on demand, but you could set it up to run on a schedule similar to AppFlow. And then we need a database where we're gonna catalog this uh, data. So you're not actually creating a data store, but it's, um, when you then use Tableau to sign in with Athena, you'll pick your database where the tables are contained. So let's just call this uh, SAS webinar again. We don't need any of these. Um, we can create that and we might uh, prefix added to the table. So we know these are Salesforce ones. So maybe we'll just put SF there. Then we can define our grouping behavior for S3 data. So, um, uh, sorry, Glue will go through and look through all of your folders and it will try to match schemas together. So if you had multiple um, folders for your opportunities data, um, Glue would try to combine them together into one schema. But um, 
you can tell Glue to just create a single schema for each S3 path. So every single folder will have its own path in S3, but we don't want that. We want it to be bringing similar schemas together. So hopefully this will just create one um, object, uh, sorry, opportunities object schema and one accounts object schema. And if we had more data within our opportunities folder, it would just bring that all together. So we'll leave that as it is. And then our configuration options. So um, when the crawler detects schema changes, how should it handle it? We want it to update the table definition. And um, how should glue handle deleted objects in the data store? Um, we're going to mark the table as deprecated. We're just going to leave those as default. I'm going to hit next. And as always, we can review what we've done. Um, and then I'm going to hit finish. And now we've got our AWS webinar crawler set up. So we're going to run that crawler and hopefully um, we should get some tables catalogued. So this process should take a minute or so. Um, you can see from the other crawlers that I've had run, none of them have taken more than a minute. Um, but as it goes through, we should hopefully, if everything goes well, see two tables added to our database because of our two um, Salesforce objects that we've got in S3. And so once this is catalogued, we'll be able to start playing around with this data in Tableau. So the next two steps that we'll have to do, or sort of the final two steps, um, to connect through Athena um, in Tableau, you need programmatic access to AWS. So it doesn't pop open a sort of login window like you would with Salesforce, where you can just log into your account. You need um, a secret access key and secret access token. So we need to go and create one of those. Um, we can see here, we've got um, our table that's been added. So that's looking good, or two tables, sorry. And we've got our, our crawler stopping now. So looking positive. So if we now go through to our tables, we should have so we should have probably um put maybe a hyphen or something before our data, but we've got here can you see SF Salesforce accounts? That's our accounts object coming from our AppFlow webinar over here. And then we've also got down here our Salesforce ops. And you can see that it's in the, the um, SAS webinar database. So actually, um, if I just go through to one of those tables, so our accounts, we can see that um, Glue has gone through and started to catalog our data. So we've got our field names, um, we've got our data types, and that's looking pretty good to me. So we can now start to go and query this data using Athena. So the next step we wanna do from here is we want to create an IAM role to log in using Tableau, and we are gonna then go to our Tableau desktop or maybe Tableau prep and we can use those credentials and start to query our data. We're now going to head over to IAM um, in order to set up our user um, to be able to access this data lake that we've just created. Um, as I mentioned before, we need to set up a user with programmatic access because that's how the access works in Tableau. Um, so if we just head over to IAM, um, we can set up our user. So in here, we're going to head to users um, and we're going to add a user. We're going to call this uh, SAS Data Lake and we're going to grant programmatic access. So. As I mentioned earlier, programmatic access will give you an access key ID and a secret access key. This is how we access our data lake using Tableau. Um, and 
this is also how you would access AWS using the API or um, command line interface or the SDK. Um, what I'm doing at the moment is this second option, management console access. So I have a user account where I log in with a password and that's how you access the management console. And so you can grant different users different access for different purposes. So we're going to leave that with programmatic access. And then we're going to go um, over and add some permissions. So you can add users to a group or you could copy some permissions from an existing user or you can um, attach existing policies. And that's what we're going to do because we want to grant this user access to S3 and access to Athena. So if we go through and we'll search for S3, we're going to grant Amazon S3 full access. And we're going to grant Athena full access. Select that option. We're going to go and add some tags to this. Well, you can add some tags. I'm not going to add any tags. Um, we're going to go through and review. Uh, we can see that we've got our username here. We've got the programmatic access that looks right with an access key. And we've got our permission summary. So access to S3 and Athena. We're going to go ahead and create this user. So now um, we've got our user, we've got our access key ID, and we've got our secret access key. When you view your secret access key, you then can't view it again. Um, this is something unique to the access key. It's like a programmatic access. So you can download those credentials as a CSV. Um, so you've got them in a safe place. But once I view this once here, I won't be able to view that access key again. I would have to create a new access key for the user if they forgot their credentials or didn't have them saved somewhere. So um, we're going to head over to Tableau. And here I'm trying to connect to Amazon Athena. So what you want to do, this might pop up as blank for you, but as I've tried to connect before, it's already a bit pre-populated. So your server is always going to be Athena dot your region. So London, where I am, is EU West 2. Then you're going to have Amazon AWS .com. The port is going to be 443. And then this um, staging directory is that folder that we created earlier where we're going to put our Athena queries. So um, if um, well, I'll show you in a second, but that folder is empty at the moment. But as soon as I start querying in Tableau or if I was querying in um, Athena in the management console, then you would start to see files being written there. So I'm just going to put in my access key ID and my secret access key before I lose it. So I'm going to copy that, the access key ID, paste that in there. And then my secret access key. So obviously, it's not best practice to show you that, but this is all going to be deleted pretty soon. So um, that's not the end of the world. Got our access key in there. And so just before I sign in, I just want to show you that um, within my uh, my AppFlow webinar folder, Athena, at the moment there are no objects in there because we've just set up this folder for the purpose of querying our other two folders in our data lake. So we've got our Salesforce accounts and our opportunities. And once we start to query that data, we should see proof of the connection that there are files written to here. So if we now sign in, Hopefully that is a success. It's looking promising. Um, so now we're going to start to query our data. So we want to select our catalog. And by default, you just have your AWS data catalog. And that's where Glue stores all these metadata tables. And then you'll remember that we created a database um, when we created that crawler. So if now we've got some other ones that have been created before, but we created this SAS webinar one. And so within there, we should see our two Salesforce objects. And if we click in there, happy days. It's exactly what we want. So we've got our accounts object there and we've got our opportunities there. So our two um, objects that we pulled out from Salesforce. We've started to build our data lake. Um, remember, this is not replacing a Salesforce connector in Tableau. 
you might have loads of different objects in here from different SaaS platforms as you start to build out that data lake. And now you've got them all in one store instead of having loads of different connections to multiple different stores. So now I pull out my opportunities object into here. Those of you that are familiar with Salesforce will notice that this data looks pretty familiar. So we've now got that Salesforce information out of Amazon into Tableau. And you can see that our glue crawler has um, classified all the data types. So our integers are integers, our booleans are booleans. Um, and then we could go and start to play with this data in Tableau. So I don't know, we want to look at our campaign ID. Um, okay, <laughs> maybe not such a good one to have chosen. Maybe our account ID. Um, and we want to see our amounts. We are now querying that data that's stored in our S3 data lake. And now, if I head back to the management console and look in that Athena folder, we can see we've now got some data that's written there. So these are all, these will, um, this will be information about me connecting. Uh, with those credentials that I've just used and what what queries I've written because Athena is essentially just a querying layer that sits on top of S3. Um, so that data is all recorded. Every time you um, are doing this in Tableau, you're writing queries to Athena. Um, and that's something to be aware of if you do do this with Tableau, right? Because Athena, you pay for Athena on a per query basis. So if you have um, a live connection to Athena, you're going to want to change that to an extract um, realistically, because every time you drag and drop something in Tableau, that's going to be writing a new query to Athena unless you've already extracted that data. Otherwise, you would just be um, every time you run an extract, that would be running an, a query to Athena. So. A live connection here is something you probably want to watch out for because you might start to incur some costs. Um, but up to that point, that's that's where we're going to finish up here. Um, so just to recap, um, we we pulled in our in our data from Salesforce, our accounts and our opportunities object using AppFlow. We've then loaded, used AppFlow to load that data into S3, where we've started to build out our data lake. We've then used Glue to catalog our data. And then we've used Athena to query that data in Tableau. So you could use Athena in the management console if you wanted to query that data. But we've used the Athena connector in Tableau just to um, tie this all together. Um, so yeah, you could now start to, with this, uh, knowledge you could start to go and connect your other SaaS platforms, start to um, build out other app flows, load that data into your S3 data lake and build out a much bigger platform that you can then go and build applications off, you can run queries against, you can maybe if you have loads of data you might want to start loading it into a Redshift data warehouse, um, you could start writing Lambda queries off your data, uh, Lambda scripts off your uh, information i mean the opportunities are really endless once you've got that data into s3 um so with that i'll wrap this up um i hope you've enjoyed this session um and you found it useful uh if you have and you're new to the information lab please subscribe to this channel we've got all sorts of videos on um aws on tableau on alterix um, this is part of an analytics in the cloud series, the second video. So if you're interested in particular in AWS, then um, we had a session last month on tips for deploying Tableau Server on AWS by my colleague, Jonathan McDonald. So go and check that out. Um, but otherwise, I will see you soon in a new video. And thank you for watching.